This isn't necessarily crime related. I mean, it is. These stories about law enforcement officers, it's not directly crime related. But I just thought I'd point out just how dangerous being a law enforcement officer is in America. On average, at least one officer is shot per day in America. And the leading cause of line of duty deaths is gunfire incidents. We're going to look at some recent incidents uh, where a cop was shot in the line of duty. Starting in Pinellas Park, Florida, Corporal Matt Aitken, that was the officer, he was shot and injured by Zion Bostic, a 23-year-old uh, car thief who was eventually fatally shot and killed in this incident. A suspected car burglar opened fire on Pinellas County deputies and a canine before being shot and killed by law enforcement. According to St. Petersburg Police, someone called 911 shortly before 7 p.m. to report a suspect, Zion Bostic, breaking into cars. Police say the witness approached Bostic and began recording video. He fled the area, but witnesses were able to give law enforcement a description of Bostic. Um, K-9 Corporal Matthew Aitken with Pinellas County tracked the suspect to a church. Sergeant Jacob Viano then tracked the suspect to a fenced-in backyard where he was waiting for law enforcement and opened fire, striking Aitken. The sergeant returned fire and killed the suspect. Aitken was taken to the hospital and is expected to survive. So that's an example of the police actually following up on some of this stuff that led to the cop being shot. In a lot of cities like Chicago, the cops probably wouldn't have even chased after this guy if he was just breaking into cars. In Herman, Missouri, uh, Detective Sergeant Mason Griffith, okay, this is the officer that was killed. I did a separate video on this. He was killed by Kenneth Lee Simpson. And I did a, a, a separate video on this because I do videos on all the officers that have been shot, fatally shot in the line of duty. And he was number nine for this year. Police took a man into custody in Herman, ending a standoff that lasted more than 12 hours after two officers were shot, one fatally, during an armed confrontation at a gas station. The Murray... Missouri State Highway Patrol said Sergeant Mason Griffith died from his injuries in the encounter that led to the standoff. Standoff started early Monday morning with Kenneth Lee Simpson, who officers believe may be the suspect. Officers were outside the home where they believe Simpson was holed up. A team filled the house with gas before 2 p.m. and got a man out. The individual was put in handcuffs and walked away. And then we have in Detroit, Michigan, a trooper sergeant and a trooper were both injured, as well as the suspect, an adult male, while they were trying to serve a search warrant. A wounded suspect is in custody after firing shots and injuring two Michigan State Police. During a press conference, Detroit Police Chief said the trooper sustained non-life-threatening injuries and were transported to a nearby hospital. The shooting took place around 5.15 p.m. The suspect barricaded himself inside the Detroit home. One officer was struck three times and the other once. The suspect is in custody. He is, in fact, wounded. It appears that through the exchange of gunfire earlier, he was struck, but he is now in custody without further incident. So two officers were struck in this incident, and one was hit three times. So he's probably lucky that he's actually alive. So let's go on to Deptford, New Jersey. Officer Bobby Schisler was injured. The suspect, 24-year-old Mitchell Negron Jr., 
He was killed. Mitchell Negron Jr. first ran and then struggled with Deptford police officer Robert Schistler after being approached on dead-ended Delcy Drive shortly after 12.30 p.m. Both individuals were shot. Negron was pronounced dead at the scene at 1.01 p.m. Meanwhile, three officers applied a tourniquet to Schistler's leg and rushed him to the Cooper Medical Center in Camden. He has a long recovery ahead of him and after sustaining critical life-threatening injuries. So this is this is exact this is the stuff you don't hear. You hear when a police officer is killed in the line of duty, but you don't hear when they, they get just injured like this. They don't really talk about this stuff, and it literally happens every day. At least one officer in the country is being injured by gunfire. That's not other incidents where they're injured by, by knives or any you know blunt force objects or anything like that. Just with guns, it's at least one a day. And this guy's going to have, it's like they said, a long recovery. It doesn't really say what his injuries are. But his life has been affected by this just from going to work and having to deal with these thugs. Okay, this one is Miami, Florida. The officer is Darian Washington. He was injured. And the suspect's name is Stephen Galleon IV. And he was arrested during a traffic stop. He attempted to lose the officer, speeding several times around the block. Then, they say Moore eventually slammed on the brakes. The officer crashed into the back of the vehicle. As the officer got out of the car, Galleon fired the shot from behind. Galleon, who police arrested the next morning, is the son of Steve Galleon III, a member of the Miami-Dade School Board. Police also arrested Frederick Watkins. They accused of helping Galleon hide from the police. So this guy fled, gets in an accident, and starts firing on the officers, injuring one. In Los Angeles, California, looks like three officers were injured in this. And the suspect, 32-year-old Jonathan Magana, he was killed. And let's see, plainclothes LAPD Hollenbeck Division Narcotics Enforcement Details Officers first responded to the call around 3.50 on a report of 32-year-old parolee Jonathan Magana at large. Magana ran from officers and police set up a perimeter in the area while a helicopter was called in. At around 6.45 p.m., officers searched the area, found Magana barricaded inside a shed-like structure. During the subsequent investigation, officers came across the individual who refused to comply to the commands and a request for canine officers was requested. A chemical agent was deployed at the scene by officers via a robot. Police say Megana then exited the shed and fired at officers, striking three of them. One officer was struck in the arm, another in the leg, and a third was struck in the stomach. An unknown number of officers returned fire. The three officers were taken to the hospital. Megana was reported dead at the scene just before 9.30 p.m. following a two-hour standoff. Officers again deployed gas into the area where he was barricaded just before SWAT members entered and found him unresponsive. Law enforcement sources confirm Jonathan Megana was a parolee with at least four felony convictions. He had previously been charged with battery on a police officer, robbery, and drug crimes. So this is a guy that's been already has attacked police officers in the past. And he probably, he's on parole. It doesn't say what he was on parole for other than it was a felony conviction. But he probably didn't get a very harsh sentence when he was in Los Angeles. And they, they're they continually putting these people back out on the streets that they know have not only the felony convictions, but have harmed police officers in the past, just further putting police officers' lives at risk. And the next one we got is Great Falls, Montana. Don't do a whole lot of stories on Great Falls, Montana, 
But this officer was injured, and the suspect, 37-year-old Jacob Kane Bradley, was also injured. This one was during a traffic stop. The incident started around 3.50 p.m. when an officer tried to pull over a vehicle for a routine traffic violation. According to Newton, the driver of the car did not stop, and the officer chose not to pursue. Shortly after, a second officer saw the car, and one suspect abandoned the car, fleeing on foot. The suspect was located, and an officer pursued him on foot. Shortly after the start of the chase, the suspect reportedly turned and fired several rounds at the officer, who was seriously injured. Medical procedures were performed on the injured officer, who was taken by another officer to the hospital in the patrol car. The suspect continued to flee, but was confronted by another officer a block away. Newton reported several shots were fired, and the suspect was shot in the head and taken to the hospital. The suspect has been identified as Jacob Kane Bradley, who is a prolee out of Yellowstone County. Charges against Bradley are pending. So another, I mean, we're talking just routine police stuff that leads to these shootings. And the first cop didn't even pursue him. You know, he let him go. That's something they that like is a law, I guess, in Chicago that you cannot pursue uh, people people that are fleeing in vehicles. Can't get into chases. But I didn't realize they did that in Montana. So we have another one here at Winston Salem, North Carolina, where an officer was injured, and the suspect, 29-year-old Alexander Parks Holland, was killed in this incident. And let's see. Forsyth County deputies said the driver was killed after being hit with gunfire. A South Carolina man is dead after shooting at five law enforcement officers during a chase that resulted in a crash. It happened around 2 a.m. Alexander Parks Holland sustained injuries from the crash and was shot during an exchange of gunfire. Multiple patrol cars were hit during the shooting as Holland continued to shoot at officers even after his car crashed and rolled over. So this guy was determined to shoot these police officers. They said he refused to stop and a chase started. During the chase, officials said Holland fired several shots at patrol cars and eventually the chase ended and in a crash. So again, this guy's just, you know, he's fleeing and he's just firing and, you know, he ends up wounding a police officer in the process. So we got this last one. I think this is the last one. This is the last one. Uh, Mardella Springs, Maryland. Sergeant Brooks Phillips was injured in an altercation with the suspect Kiefer Lee Copper III. He's 23, year, 23 years old. And he was killed, the suspect. And the cop was shot during a traffic stop. A Maryland state trooper shot Monday night during a traffic stop has been released from the hospital. According to the Maryland State Police, the trooper tried to initiate a traffic stop around 10 p.m. involving a Toyota Prius. Police said the trooper approached the vehicle when the driver shot at and struck the trooper several times. The trooper returned fire, but none of the people in the car were hit by the police officer's return fire. Another trooper arrived at the scene and provided medical treatment to the injured trooper, took him to the hospital. Sergeant Phillips was shot three times, two in the chest. He was wearing a life-saving vest, and he has been released from the hospital. Wow, lucky he had that vest on. Otherwise, this would be a totally different story. According to officials, shortly after the incident, they found the suspect's vehicle Police followed the vehicle to a dead-end street. Police said the driver attempted to turn the vehicle around and crash into two trees or crash into two vehicles before hitting a tree. Police said they then surrounded the vehicle and saw the suspect slumped over the wheel after apparently shooting himself. No shots were fired at the scene of this crash. The suspect was identified as Kiefer Copper III. 
And that's something I don't know if people realize, but if you look at like statistics of suspects that were killed by gunfire in the presence of officers, a large number of them are suicides where the, the suspect takes his own life and it goes down in the statistics as being an officer involved injury or killing when in fact the suspect actually took his own life. It was just in the presence of police officers or during an interaction with police officers. So those were just a few incidents from this past week. If this is something that you're interested in hearing more of, um, I can do regular videos on these. I think it's kind of important for people to just see how difficult a police officer's job is and just how often they get shot at by these thugs that they're, you know, trying to arrest, trying to serve a, a warrant to, trying to just pull over in a traffic stop, and they don't even know who the guy is. So I kind of like these things. If anybody's interested in this stuff, I'll gladly do more of this on a weekly basis like this, where we do a few stories in one video. Uh, other than that, thanks for watching.